Hey there everybody, it's the recap uh, video for the January 15th team meeting conference call that we did. Uh, this time around, because we canceled the first Thursday meeting in January, uh, it was New Year's Day, that's where we normally would have covered uh, the promotion items for January. I went ahead and threw that in on this one just so that you had some information on those items. So we'll just jump right into it. I'm going to try to make this one a little shorter than the last one. That one kind of got to run in a little long for everybody. So uh, just to really quickly kind of go over the free promo items for January. They have made some changes to the, the uh, free promotion program. It's now available through Essential Rewards Orders. Um, so there's three different tiers or levels of rewards that you can, or uh, promotions that you can earn. You can earn them at 190 PV, at 250 PV, and at 300 PV. If you're not sure what I'm talking about with PV, uh, please get in touch with me so I can explain that. Or look back on the website. There was a blog post from April of 14 that kind of talks about PV and, and all of those terms that we use. Um, that needs to be a total for one order, not your cumulative total for the month. So one order needs to total 190, 250, or 300 or more. Um, and then you're going to earn these free promotion items. It used to be that you could earn them on regular orders and on essential rewards orders, and you could earn free items multiple times in the month. They've now changed that. Uh, the only promotion that's offered on a regular order is for the 190 PV, and it's one bottle of spearmint this month, a five milliliter bottle of spearmint. Uh, for the essential rewards orders, the 190 PV is the bottle of spearmint, but also a five milliliter bottle of copaiba. Uh, for the 250 level, you get the spearmint, the copaiba. You also get a $20 enrollment voucher. And then at 300, you get the spearmint, the copaiba, the enrollment voucher, and a bottle of sleep essence. Um, and again, the 190, 250, and 300 need to be on essential rewards. Um, they do have a limited supply of the spearmint for 190 PV on a regular order. At any time, that could run out, and that's done for the month then. So if you want to guarantee that you're going to get these free items, please make sure that you're ordering through essential rewards. If you're not sure what that is or why you'd want to be a part of it, get in touch with either myself or the person who enrolled you, and we would be happy to explain what that is. It's a great program. Um, I won't get into it on this, but definitely look into it if you're, um, you know, it, at all interested. So just a little bit about the products that are offered, keeping everything FDA compliant. Um, Spearmint has traditionally been used to support healthy digestion. It's very tasty. Um, I have used it personally um, in cooking. I've used it in um, like a chocolate frosting. I've also used it in making some candy fillings. So really tasty one. A lot of people I know have made the comment that it's a little milder than peppermint. So if the flavor of peppermint is a little too strong for you, you might give the spearmint a try and see if that's more to your liking. Uh, Copaiba. According to the Young Living Product Guide, can enhance and inspire feelings of calm. Um, it is one of the ingredients that we use in a capsule to help relieve discomfort. Um, we partner it with frankincense and balsam fir, and we take that um, anytime we're feeling, you know, some minor aches and pains and discomforts, and that seems to really help. Um, in the single oil property chart that's in the back of your desk reference, Copaiba is listed as having the strongest anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so definitely an oil worth having on hand. You can go read more about those in your desk reference. Um, the $20 enrollment voucher. There's been some questions about these in the past. Uh, this is to take $20 off the cost of a starter kit for someone who is enrolling brand new. It cannot be used for someone who's an existing member for any of their orders, even if they're ordering another starter kit. It cannot be used for someone who's reinstating a membership that's expired. So if you had a membership in 98 and you're placing an order to turn your account back on, 
you cannot use that enrollment voucher. It's a brand new person enrolling for the first time ever, and it'll take $20 off the cost of whichever starter kit they choose. You need to give them that code that you were given, um, and it's, oh, I wanna say it's like a 15 digit number. If you can't find it, certainly contact customer service or myself. I can give you some ideas of where to find it. It's, it's hidden in a couple different places. Um, but if you absolutely can't locate it, you can call customer service and they can pull it up on your account and tell you what that number is. You would give that to the new person. They enter it when they're checking out and it takes $20 off. They do expire 90 days after they're issued, so you do want to make sure that you get that used. Don't let it go to waste. If you know that you're not going to be able to use it, feel free to pass it on to someone else. Um, sometimes you know people that have someone waiting in the wings ready to enroll and that $20 voucher can be just the incentive they were looking for. So feel free to hand them off to other people. Um, just don't let them go to waste. That's such a shame to, to let those expire. Uh, the sleep essence capsules are the last thing that are being added to the promotion for the month. It's a combination of uh, lavender, ruta, valerian, and vetiver oils combined with melatonin. Uh, and it says they help support a restful night's sleep. Um, you know, do your research on melatonin. Most of what I've read has said that it's not something you want to consider taking long term. So definitely something that you could take off and on as needed, kind of help your body reset a little bit and, and get back into a good solid sleeping pattern. Again, you can read more about that one in your desk reference. It's in there um, under the supplements section. Um, so then the next thing we were going to talk about uh, this meeting was um, some Young Living products that can help with um, keeping New Year's resolutions. So I just tried to brainstorm some resolutions that people might make. The big one always seems to be weight loss or weight management. Um, and for that, if it were me, I would turn to any of the sleek products that Young Living has. You can buy them separately, you can buy them in bundles. Um, depending on what your objective is, those are gonna be really helpful items. Um, we've tried a few of them here and there. My husband was having trouble with snacking and so his big thing was you know, trying to find something to fill that gap for the snacking. And so he did the sleep gum for a while. He would take that to work and that really seemed to help kind of cut that middle of the day munchies kind of feeling for him. Um, something else to consider if you've got that snacking kind of issue that you're trying to deal with. Um, you know, maybe your body's telling you that you need more nutrition, you need more calories. You know, snacking isn't a bad thing, it's what we snack on that becomes the problem. Um, so consider the sleek bars, the wolfberry crunch bars, or the dried wolfberries. Any of those would be great healthy alternatives for that mid-afternoon snack or mid-morning snack, whatever you need. Um, uh, the Wolfberry Crunch Bars are amazing. I love them. They are very tasty. To be honest, though, they are so filling. I can only eat about a half of one, which is great because then I can eat a half and save the other one for later. Um, but definitely, you know, good, solid nutrition instead of just that sugar pick-me-up. Um, something else to consider when you're trying to deal with weight loss or weight management Skipping meals is always a no-no. Um, a lot of people are really bad about skipping breakfast because they're in a hurry or they don't, you know, they don't want to stop and take the time to do it. My husband is one of those people. He started making shakes every morning with Young Living's Balance Complete, some Ningxia Red Juice. Depending on what oils he was needing or wanting that day, he'd throw some drops of oils in there. Uh, you can get those shaker bottles that have a little ball in them that mixes it all up for you. That is a great alternative to just skipping a meal outright. Um, power meal, pure protein complete, balance complete. Young Living's got those three to choose from. I know a lot of people that will put fruit in them. They'll put yogurt in them. Um, you can throw some ice cream in there too if you wanted to. You might lose a little bit of the health benefit. But um, definitely, you know, make it your own. Turn it into a smoothie. Pour some Ningxia Red in there. That's going to do wonders for you. A couple drops of whatever oil you're looking to use for the day. And uh, you're, you're all set with your meal then. Uh, sorry, I just flipped the paper in front of you there. Um, 
the, another New Year's resolution a lot of people will talk about is kicking a habit. Smoking or snacking or drinking pop or chewing their fingernails or, you know, whatever kind of a habit you've got that you'd like to kick. Um, there's not specifically a protocol lined out for here's how you would go about stopping chewing your nails. Um, this is based on testimonies I've heard from other people that have had success. Um, I have heard a lot of people say that cinnamon bark is an oil they've really seen great luck with in cutting the sugar cravings. Um, so pop and chocolate and that, that midday sweet snacking. Um, do a little drop of cinnamon bark in your mouth and you know, it seems to be good to go. Um, smoking seems to be another one that a lot of people want to kick. Um, I've heard a lot of testimonies of black pepper oil and clove oil really helping to control um, the cravings for the cigarettes. So, you know, something to consider there if you're if you're looking to do that. A big thing in kicking a habit is just changing what you're doing. You know, typically people who, for example, smoke, they find that they're in a certain situation at a certain time, maybe with a specific group of people, and that triggers the desire to smoke. Eliminate those surroundings. Change your environment. Change the group of people you're with. If every day at 3 o'clock you go outside at work to have a cigarette with two or three people, from now on at 3 o'clock, do something deliberately different so that you're not tempted at 3 o'clock to feel like, oh, it's time to go out there. Um, same thing with biting your nails or twirling your hair. Um, change your surroundings. Change your situation. If you notice that you bite your nails when you're you know, in the middle of a stressful conference call, Next time you have a stressful conference call, get up and pace back and forth across your office or, you know, pick up a pencil and take notes instead. Keep your hands busy and away from your mouth and that's going to help kind of change that behavior pattern for you. Um, sticking to a new routine is a resolution that a lot of people do. They want to work out. They want to cook healthier. They want to get in a better habit of cleaning their home. They want to... Be more diligent about paying bills and making a balance sheet. Um, whatever the routine is you're trying to do, again, this is personal testimony. I find that I can get through and, and pay attention to what I'm doing, get through a to-do list. If I've got motivation blend in the diffuser and clarity on the back of my neck, for me, that is my go-to when I've got something I need to get done especially if it's something that I'm not used to doing and it's kind of an out of the ordinary, I've got to sit down and I've got to write the budget this month. I don't normally do that. I'm distracted by everything around me. Those two oils together for me seem to really do the trick. Um, I would also suggest highest potential or transformation. Um, any of those would be great. Brain power would be another one. Um, anything that's going to help really zone in and focus you um, you know, have that going in the diffuser, have it on the back of your neck, on your feet, um, on a diffuser necklace, whatever works for you. Uh, maybe you are vowing to get better sleep in 2015. Um, it's a great month to pick up on the promotion then because the sleep essence capsules are going to be a great way to help support a really healthy sleep pattern. There are a lot of oils out there that have really helped people um, support that natural, normal, healthy sleep pattern. Lavender, Rudavala, um, Cedarwood, Peace and Calming, Tranquil, you know, and that's just to name a few. Um, you can diffuse them. You can put them on your feet. I know some people will drip them on their hands and then kind of rub their linens. Whatever does the trick for you. The biggest thing is don't try it one night and then give up on it. Sometimes it takes a few nights you know, and because lavender works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So try some different ones. Sometimes it takes one on your feet and one on the diffuser or some combination there. Um, the other thing to consider, and it's something that happens around here, my sleep problems are not necessarily always related to me. Sometimes they are being caused by the person I'm sleeping next to and the snoring. Um, so maybe consider an oil to help if you have a restless sleeper or a noisy sleeper that you lay next to, um, I know my husband finds great support from Valor on his feet in the night. And kind of an added perk that I've discovered is he does not seem to snore as badly on the nights that he uses the Valor. So 
that might be something to consider you know if you've got a respiratory thing making the person next to you um, congested and snore you might consider addressing their issue and not so much your sleeping <laughs> issue that might take care of it for you um, if you had too much stress in 2014 and you are determined that 2015 is not going to be stressful any of those oils that we just talked about for sleep help are going to be great for helping with um, normal body reaction to stress, trying to keep everything FDA compliant here. Um, they're very calming, they're very soothing, uh, they're very relaxing. The nice thing about them is they're not sedatives. You're not going to take one and then pass out on the floor five minutes later. So if it's three o'clock in the afternoon and you're stressed, you can use a little bit of lavender to help support your body um, in calming down and relaxing a little without fear of falling asleep behind the wheel on the way home. Um, so certainly any of those that are helpful for sleep would be helpful for relaxation. Um, frankincense is another one that's great for helping re relaxation. There have been studies come out that show that it um, inhaling frankincense causes a 40% reduction in cortisol levels. Um, cortisol is our stress hormone. So I personally find that that one's very helpful for me when I, I feel my anxiety and tension going up. Um, just that smell seems to be very calming to me. A um, lot of testimonies, people using valerian to help relax and calm. Um, so certainly, you know, again, try one just because frankincense works for me doesn't guarantee that it's going to do the same for you um, but certainly would be worth a try so you know something to consider um, if one of your resolutions is you just want overall better health oh my goodness the list goes on and on what young living has to offer just improving health one of the big things we hear is good health comes from the gut if you have a healthy gut you have a healthy body for the most part um, so maybe look at addressing your gut health um, Young Living has a ton of products that are very supportive to a healthy digestive system. The Life 5 Probiotic, uh, the Essential Zyme products. Um, if you're deficient in a particular vitamin, they've got, you know, vitamin C, they've got vitamin Bs, they've got, you know, very superior supplements that can help you with any kind of shortages you're having. The multigreens, the mineral essence, you know, if there's holes in your diet that need to be filled. Those are great to go to. Um, for us, the Ningxia red juice is huge. We treat that like our multivitamin. Um, I give it to the kids. I take it myself. Normally for us, we do about two ounces a day. Um, if we start to feel like we're coming down with something and need the little extra boost of, of immune support, you can up it to four, six, eight ounces a day. You can mix it in with other juice. You can mix it in your breakfast smoothie. However you want to get it in, you know, go for it. Um, boosting your immune system. Sorry, that paper again. <laughs> um, boosting your immune system. Just giving your immune system that extra support it needs. We all know there are certain times of the year that are just particularly germy. And we want a little bit of extra immune support. Thieves on your feet uh, before you leave the house. For us around here during those particularly germy times of year, it's part of getting dressed. Um, we put a roller ball on top of a bottle of thieves and the boys know that that's part of getting dressed in the morning. They put on thieves and then they do their socks and shoes. Um, Immu Pro is a great supplement that you can add. Um, it's a chewable a lot of great support out of that one. Uh, the Ningxia red juice, again, is a real good one. So um, gut health, immune support, making sure you're getting good sleep. Your body heals while you're sleeping. So make sure that your sleep is adequate. Um, you know, those are all going to help support your health, your overall health during the year. Um, moving on then. If you had any specific um, New Year's resolutions that you made that you would like some suggestions or, you know, opinions or anything, um, you know, obviously I haven't used every oil for every condition or issue or, or whatever, um, but I'm certainly more than happy to talk it through with you and offer what I've got. Um, moving on to the business section, we talked about... Um, the issue that has come up with the FDA and being compliant. And you've heard me say that in this video and in the other videos, 
keeping everything FDA compliant. Um, I can't say, oh yes, we use thieves to prevent the flu. We're not allowed to say things like that, even though I just did as an example. Um, so basically what happened, a little bit of background as to what happened, why this has all come up recently. Um, some of you that are very new to the group, you may not have even realized that this came up recently, but late this fall, uh, several Young Living distributors received basically a warning letter from the FDA saying that they had violated policies, that they had made product claims that Young Living products were able to cure or treat a disease or an illness. Um, this time around, Ebola was a big red flag for them. There were claims being made about oils that could prevent it, could cure it, could treat it. We cannot say things like that. We've never been allowed to say things like that. Um, it kind of hit the fan. Some people got some letters. Young Living um, got their feathers ruffled a little bit. Basically what it amounts to, these have always been the rules. This has not changed. Um, Young Living, as far as I'm aware, did not impose new rules because of this. They just are being very, very strict about enforcing the rules that they have. Um, the first step is going to go be is going to be to go read the policies and procedures handbook. You agreed to the policies and procedures when you enrolled as a distributor. It is your responsibility to know what they are and whether or not you are following them. Um, the consequences of not following them are that Young Living can choose to terminate your account if you are violating them repeatedly. You know, I. As far as I know, they will issue you a warning before they just shut your account off. But it's your responsibility to know what they are. They cover everything. You know, what marketing materials can you make? What logo do you have to use? Can you make and sell product with Young Living? All of that is in there. Um, but specifically what we're talking about is what are you allowed to say to people when you're sharing oils? That is covered in there as well. I'm posting two documents along with this video that I referenced during the conference call. One of them was put out by Young Living. It's called Sharing Young Living the Right Way. And it basically breaks down the whole what you can and cannot say and do. Um, I encourage you to read it several times. There's nothing, it's not rocket science. There's nothing hard about it. We cannot make disease claims or cure claims. We cannot say disease names. We cannot say drug names. We cannot um, even abstractly suggest that we replaced a drug with an oil. So for example, I could not go on Facebook and say, I don't take my allergy medicine anymore because I use lavender oil instead. I, even though I did not specifically say Zyrtec or Benadryl or a specific name, I implied that an oil took the place of a drug and that's a no-no. I cannot do that. Um, the other document that I am posting is one called Words to Avoid When Sharing About Essential Oils. It gives you some idea of words that are safe to use. So instead of using the word cure, it gives you some suggestions of words that you could use. Instead of treat or prevent, um, it gives you some vocabulary to choose from. It's a little mini thesaurus for you. Um, the, big, the big issue here is that the internet is not safe. Facebook is not our friend right now when we're talking about sharing oils. Um, doesn't matter what the privacy setting is on the group. It can be a private or secret group. Anyone who wants to and is inclined to can get into that group and can see what's being said. And that's where a lot of these people were caught and they actually have direct quotes from their private or secret Facebook group. Um, it's not private or secret. If you've put it out there in text, it is considered published. If you have put it out there on the internet, anybody who wants to can see it. Um, that goes for Facebook, for Twitter, for Instagram, for private messages back and forth. And, you know, even in reality, it goes for emails as well. Um, so really these precautions are especially vital um, when you're talking to someone online. You don't want a record of having said, I did this, it cured this, I used this instead of this drug. Um, for that reason, I am not recording the conference calls. 
because in the event that someone asks me a question and I didn't watch how I worded my answer, I don't need there to be a recording of it. Um, I don't allow my classes to be recorded for that same reason. I don't want to have to watch so carefully what I say to make sure that somebody doesn't put it on YouTube and then there's a record of it. Does this really make a huge difference in person? Yeah, okay, yes and no. Yes, technically they are the rules. You are expected to follow the rules. So guard what you say. Don't make promises about the product that we can't back up. Don't tell somebody that there's a cure for cancer if they use this oil, if there's not the research and the documentation to back it up. Um, you can offer them testimonies. You can offer them your own personal story. You can offer them the contact information of someone who is currently using the oil for the same kind of question that your friend might have. Um, am I as careful when I talk to people in person? No. Um, I do tend to share more of my personal testimony when I'm face to face with someone. There's no record of it having been said. It's not in print. It's not been recorded. I can have a conversation with a friend face to face and feel safe doing that. I'm still going to watch what I say. I'm still not going to make product claims that I can't back up. For one, I don't want to put myself in that kind of a position to have my friend come back and say, well, you told me this would do this, this, and this, and it didn't. I always word it as it helped me with this. I don't know if it will help you, but it would certainly be worth a try. Um, you know, my kids find relief from this. I don't know if yours will, but if it were me, I'd give it a try. Um, you know, wording like that is going to be safe. So use your best judgment. The biggest thing here is, you know, in the Facebook groups, we can't go in there and say, my kid has hand, foot, and mouth. What can I do about it? Because you're asking people to offer you prescriptive treatment. Um, you're asking them to come back and say, oh, you could use this oil and it'll take care of that. They can't say that. You can't ask for, for you know, a diagnosis, or a, not a diagnosis, but you can't ask for a prescription from them. Um, another thing that I've seen a lot of people do that's really quite foolish, actually, they'll post a picture. What's this rash look like? Or, ooh, I got this bite. What do you think about this? If you're asking for diagnosis through a picture on Facebook, that has got to sound alarms in your head. That is an incredibly bad idea. Um, you know, I, and I, I don't mean that to insult anybody. If you're one of those people that has posted a picture, please don't be insulted by me saying this. I'm just trying to raise awareness. Anyone who will come back and say, oh, that's disease X, that's a huge liability. No one in their right mind should be diagnosing from a picture. Um, even a physician with a PhD would not be safe to diagnose from a picture on Facebook. Um, it's not safe for you and it's not safe for them. Um, if you have a health concern and you are concerned about it, go seek medical treatment. Don't post a picture on Facebook and ask, what is this? What do I do about it? Um, go to an actual medical professional and have them look at it. Um, you know, that, that violates all of these policies that, you know, they've been asking us to stay compliant. Um, so no questions with specific disease names, no pictures, those kinds of things. As long as we can stay compliant with that, our Facebook pages can stay open. We can continue to chat and share and help each other out. Um, one of your best resources is going to be to get a desk reference if you don't have one already. That way it puts the power in your own hand. You can look things up for yourself. Um, something else you can consider, uh, there is a code um, ICD as in dog and the number nine. It's a medical billing code. Uh, and if you type in that into a search engine, so Google or Yahoo or, or whatever, ICD nine and then whatever condition you're looking at, so migraines or ICD-9 menstrual cramps or ICD-9 warts, it will pull up in the search results whether or not there is an, a billing code for that condition. That's a real good guideline. If it pulls up a billing code for that, 
it's considered a medical term. We cannot use it. Um, so things like my son has the sniffles. There's no medical code for sniffles. Um, there's a medical code for chest congestion. So it, it helps a little bit. You can use that to look for um, wording that would be safe to use when you're trying to you know, creatively word a question on Facebook. Um, I don't mean to share any of this with you to scare you, to frighten you off. I don't want it to discourage you from sharing with others at all. If anything, I feel like um, these requirements being enforced a little bit more now have actually made us better at sharing. We've gotten more creative. We've gotten more personal. A lot of people were relying strictly on Facebook to share, and they've had to step outside of that box now and actually start contacting people face-to-face, -face, on the phone. You know, it's, it's made us better at what we do. Um, it's made us get more creative, and there is never anything wrong with that. Creative is good. Um, it might take you out of your comfort zone for a minute or two, but it really can open up a new world. It makes you think outside of the box, and that's where some of the best ideas come from. So don't be frightened by it. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Don't spend too much time thinking about it and dwelling on it and worrying about it. Um, just, you know, read over the documents I've posted, stick it in the back of your mind, and go on with your day. Um, you know, we're all here to work together so we can all kind of remind each other if some of us start to slip a little. Um, it's just something I wanted to throw out there to have you be aware of um, so that none of you are getting angry letters from FDA enforcement officers. We don't need that happening. So if you've got any questions about any of that, I know I kind of rambled it off really quickly. Um, this video still ran longer than I wanted it to, but I wanted to get all that out to you. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them below the video and I will answer them there. That way, if anyone else had the same question, they can see the answer as well. Um, I will be sure to post the typed notes basically from what I just shared and then also those few documents that I mentioned so that you can pull those up and read them. They're also going to be on our Facebook page so you can pull them up there and look at them. Um, anybody that you enroll that's new, feel free to share them with them. Just hand it to them and say, you know, it's worth reading. You need to, you need to read this so you know what you're doing. Um, our next call is going to be February 5th. Uh, we're going to cover the February promotion items that should be released around the 29th of January. We should know what those are. So February 5th, promotion items. And we're going to be talking about the book, The Four-Year Career and why it is an absolute must read. Um, I can't stress that enough. If you have not read that book yet, I urge you to do it before the call. Um, we will be covering it. I promise it will change your life in so many ways. It is, it's mind blowing. Um, it's the one resource that turned my husband's head around on this whole Young Living Network Marketing business. So, um, Get that read before then. If you don't have a copy of it, let me know. I've got it on audio CD. I'd be happy to get you a copy of it before um, the February 5th call. Otherwise, you can go to um, Richard Bliss Brooks. I believe it's blissbusiness.com is his website, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, it's in the resources section on my website. You can go there and order yourself a copy. I definitely recommend having a copy for yourself and then you have something you can loan out to others. So that's what we'll be talking about February 5th. Feel free to share that conference call information with friends that you might think need to hear it as well. I look forward to talking to you again then. All right, thanks for stopping by.